The bell in round number one. Quick start from Julian Laney in the black and red trunks. Red trunks for Thiago Alves. Hands high and tight for Thiago Alves. Left jab. Alves said he was not going to rush. He was going to feel his way in, take his time. The one thing we, he talked about as well, he said Julian Lane tends to come in, has a lot of nervous energy, throws a lot of punches, tends to fade them. So you might want to let him fade a little bit and then pick it up as the second and third round come. Snap jab two in sequence from Lane. Just missing with the right cross. 15 remaining round number one of our main event at 185 pounds. See the head move. Thiago Alves, trying to wade in off of that jab, indeed showing patience. You know, one thing I loved hearing was he talked about an American top team. They've got their own bare knuckle division now, like a, a, a specific training just for this sport. That's a beautiful thing. Glad to see we're growing up as a sport. Jab not getting through that smart, high, tight striking guard of Julian Lane. That's that you pick up through six bare knuckle fights. <laughs> from Alves, not getting <laughs> to the body, that was slick. Alves taking the hook. Uppercut from Thiago Alves, that backs off lane. And right back with the left hand. And he gets it the punch and jab. He punch combination and sequence there from Alves. Right. Step back, step back, clean. Knuckle up. All a break from Andrew Glenn, the call of knuckle up right back to it. Closing stages round number one. Right hand didn't fully get through from Lane. Lane certainly does not look intimidated. We did not think that he would. And we are headed to round two. A tough round to call right there. Both guys stayed pretty tight, didn't throw too much. Some nice tight one twos, double up and jabs. Thiago Alves is cut under his left eye. Like you said earlier, a good place to get cut though. That's not going to impede his vision, stop the, stop the fight anyway. Chris, I'm in the process of teaching myself Portuguese, but I don't have a lot there. I think he said we want to see more punches and try and land a few more. Use that jab to go right into the body. They ask, where is the restaurant? I'm good. Yeah. It's a slow learning curve. I, I doubt they ask that here, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see. If so, I'm going to question their corner. Up to scratch, round number two. Simultaneous jabs. There's a good left hand from Lane. To the body goes Julian Lane. Right cross from Alvis. with the head movement of Thiago Alves. Absolutely. You can tell he said he's been working on boxing for a year straight. Not having to worry about the ground, not have to worry about the, the grappling makes it so much easier for a guy like him. Too much combination from Alves. Going down to the left eye of Lane, he circles out. And swelling has turned into a cut as the mouse has popped. To the sternum from Julian Lane. Julian Lynch is much more deliberate, measured right now. He's throwing a lot of jabs, but he's not throwing any wild looping punches like we've seen in the past. Right hand misses from Alves. Julian Lane said all of the pressure is on Thiago Alves. He's expected to win. He's expected to finish me. This is a fight. I can take my time. And Lane firmly believes that he can record the victory. He does not see himself as the B-side at all. Nor, in fact, should he. Good right to the body. Right the Saying that it's so refreshing to up the fighting championship when you don't play A-side, B-side. <laughs> the mistake, Thiago Alves, based on his phenomenal 27-fight UFC career is the bigger name. But again, Lane. This is pro-paranical fight number seven. 
You know, I'm really liking what I'm seeing from Thiago. He's mixing in his punches very well. He's, he's taking whatever, whatever he's being given right now. He's working the body when he has to. He's throwing to the head when he can. And throwing right hand right back from Elvis. Left hand was late after the bell. Next up, round three. Like I was saying there, I mean, he's, he's showing a lot of, I, I know it's a new sport, but you can just tell the experience he had. He's not calm, or he's not freaking out. He's very calm out there. He's just so relaxed, even though this is his first bare knuckle fight. October 10th, we're back with you, BKFC 13. Salina, Kansas. How you feel? See our main event, the Champion of Beltron versus Marcel Stamps. The only way to watch it is where you're watching now, worldwide exclusively. Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship TV app. Download it at bktvapp.com. Whatever jitters Thiago might have had earlier, I think they're gone right now. He's in a good flow right now. He's moving, his head movement's good. His punches are looking fantastic. All right, gentlemen, toward the line. Knuckle up! Round number three. Elvis opens with the jab off the scratch line. Doubling up the jab, lay back into the pocket. One, two from Thiago Alves. But, but blocked well from Lane. We're seeing volume from Alves, but again, we're seeing really good striking defense from Julian Lane. A actually, from both guys. Very disciplined, high tight striking guard. Tan. Talk about the head movement of Alves. This is the best head movement I've ever seen from Julian Lane. And so Julian Lane looks like he's grown a lot from the last time we've seen him. He's, he's controlling his punches a little bit more, his head movement's better. The fighters continuing to throw the one, throw that jab, the orthodox stance, and there is the two from Alves. 60 seconds remaining round three, Lane trying to go to the body with the right hand. Cut under the left eye, Thiago Alves, which opened in round number one, has certainly not been a factor. Snap jab not getting through. Both fighters proving really hard to hit. I know, this has been very impressive. I mean, as far as, you know, defensive ability, they're both showing quite a bit of it right now. Right to the body from Alves. Yeah, but Alves is doing a good job of kind of methodically taking him apart right now. Not taking him apart, but just landing more punches. He's landing to the body, he's landing when he can at the head, just jab him. There's a big right hand. And appreciates the clinch. Step back. And you see the defensive clinch. Knuckle up. Just what he wanted, the separation and the restart, center of the ring. Ten Final seconds. seconds, round number three. Set to move to round number four of our main event of the evening, Thiago Alves versus Julian. I said, Thiago Alves is looking very good right now. He's looking loose. He's not worried about too much. He's just landing good punches. His head movement's fantastic. He looks like he's not worried at all about the, the return fire punch. Jago Alves told us in our fighter meeting, I don't want to waste punches. He has not wasted punches at all. He has not been reckless. Knuckle up! Like I said, right about now is the time he said he wanted to start turning it up. I feel like Julian Lane fades as the fight goes on. And it looks like that's exactly what's going on. He's opened up a little bit more right now. And Alves said the line of demarcation is round three. The lane fades after round three. It's round three. Overhand right from Lane. Not looking like a faded fighter. With a good right hand in the uppercut. Good combination from Julian Lane. This is a very even fight. This is a 
much better round right here. Snap jab from Alex. And the jab from Thiago Alex. Make it uppercut. Looks like we got another cut from Thiago right in the forehand right there. He gets on his face. Over to the left eye that opened the round one. And indeed, that cut on the forehand. It has a very slight cut. A slight mouse pump under his left eye. It became evident in round two. And holding center of the ring. Almost going right back to the jab. Forehead cut, pouring now into his left eye, right to the body. So, of course, blood in the eye means just almost the full destruction of vision. Yeah. So difficult to see. Big problem when you can't see touch, especially with no gloves. I'd like to see Julian double up with some jabs here, trying to get inside and land another big punch. He just kind of stomps forward and, 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 and blocks, but you're not getting points for blocking, you get points for landing punches. Almost with the right cross, not setting it up with the jab. There's a good right hand from Julian Lane, right to the body. Capture being turned up now by Julian Lane. Final seconds, round number four, right here. We are headed to the fifth and final round. Much better lay round right there for Julian Lane. Hollering going on in the, in the corner of Julian Lane. <laughs> so what were we saying earlier tonight about cheerleading corners? <laughs> yeah, not a fan of him. Yeah. Fifth and final round. Let's see. Pose just said yes, sir. I was gonna say let's see if it did the had the desired effect. Is Julian Lane gonna come out firing? Thiago Alves, his BKFC debut, eats that right hand from Julian Lane. His fourth ever fight, vertical fighting championship. Seconds gone, fifth and final round. Rain now walking forward overhand right. Oh yeah, he's feeling it right now. I don't think he feels like he can be hurt at this point. Good right hand. Some athletes oh, good respond body with shot. motivation and others. <laughs> Lane firing back, but now Alves firing back. Big shot, there's the uppercut and into the fray. Rare clinch in this fight. Step back, step back, step back. Step back, clean. No all over the face of John Alves for those two right cuts. Here, right and time called by Andrew Glenn. Look at the cut. Doctor, look at the cut. So the cut is the one on his forehead, as you see, the one that's pouring right, right. the blood into the left yeah, eye. Right. That's a slice. So you see the forehead wow. cut, but now that's a slice into the eyelid. We're good? Okay. Here we go. We're good. So that's three cuts on the face of John Alves. Yeah. Time in, round five continues. And you gotta like this fight. Both these guys are battered and bloody right now. Digging deep for whoever's gonna win this fight. It very well could come down to this round. Quite possibly, and we're not privy to the Florida Judges scorecards. And those could be two, two rounds apiece. Those early rounds were very difficult to call. Yeah, I would not be surprised if we have a split decision here. I well could be looking at 38-38 coming into this fifth and final round. Good right hand. Right hand just misses from Lane. So the blood got pouring out of that cut. The mouse pop under the left eye of Lane. Julian Lane needs to really pull it on right now. He was really had a good start to this last round. Good combination from Lane.
was a great fight. Look at how these guys look at the end of that fight. Outstanding. I would not be surprised for a big decision on that one because very tight rounds. Very difficult to call who was winning a lot of very, I mean, that, that, that's going to be a, a lot of the, the judges just, who knows what they're going to call this one. Next month in Kansas, October 10th, will be in Salina, Kansas, BKFC 13. Again, Kansas, the only commission across North America to use open scoring, so the fighters would know that three judges' scorecards going into round five. Fascinating if that were the sequence here, knowing that you have one round to win a fight. I absolutely love that idea. I'd like to see that. I cannot wait to be in Kansas to see that. You know going into each round what your score is. They don't do that in the other, in the other sport. You just don't know. You, can you imagine playing a basketball game and not knowing who's winning? That was the rationale to put it into Kansas. Know the score. What back comes from knowing where you stand in terms of the score. Both fighters had to approach this fifth and final round not knowing the three judges score for sure. round five because now they had to win that final round. Yeah, I thought Julian Lane won the first part of that round, but a lot of times it matters how you end the round, not how you start it. That's the last thing on the judges' mind at the end of that round is how it finished. A lot of times you can win the first three quarters of the round, lose the last quarter, and still win the round. The thing I've noticed too, usually when you have a long time in between when the fight's over and they give the judges decisions, sometimes you get some wonky judging. Have you ever noticed that? Once or twice. Holy <laughs> <laughs> State, do we have the cards here? Looks like we do. Chicago Alves, Julian Lane, 185 pounds. Going the distance in a really rugged bout, our main event of BKFC 12. Two and all suspects, Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, put your hands together for these two. After completing the scheduled five rounds in our main event, our judges have sent into the ring a split decision. Howard Reichbach scores the fight 48-47 in favor of Lane. James O'Connor scores the fight 48-47 in favor of Alves. And Daniel Torres scores the fight 48-47 to the winner by split decision. surprise there. I thought that could be a split. This is in such a close fight, man. So all three judges seeing it three rounds to two, but two of the three, the majority, and that of course is what matters, seeing it three rounds to two, 48-47 in favor of Thiago Alves. Not without adversity, but getting the winner's medal from Scott Burt, the head of the Bare Knuckle Boxing Hall of Fame, and victorious in his eagerly awaited debut.